And so I talk about these, these phenomena as being sort of anarchic processes in a way. And so, you know, that's a, that's a big word to throw around. You know, I think most, this is what most of America thinks about anarchy. I mean, go, go look up anarchist on the Google images and you get people like throwing bombs and, okay, dudes throwing flowers. And so <laughs> this is Portland and I think we can have a little more, more mature conversation here. And so what I want to talk about is not overthrowing governments because that's really just not, not my scene. I'm not all that excited by it, but sort of what could be termed anarchic organizing. And if you've never experienced something like this, it's kind of hard to imagine how anonymous actually works um, or how the protests actually work. Uh, and I think, you know, the media's response to this is they keep looking for leaders. They keep looking for, for somebody that they can point a finger at and the cops can haul away. And it just simply doesn't work like that. And so in most of our day-to-day -day lives, we're used to having there somebody be there who can tell us what to do, who tells us what to do. And if we don't follow that, there are consequences. And so in school, that's teachers, or you get sent to the principal's office, or you get sent to detention. Um, we've got bosses who can fire us from a job, cops who take you to jail if you don't pay your taxes. And so this is what anarchists mean by hierarchy, right? It's just the system where that there are consequences for you if you don't follow orders or directions from a particular person. And so anonymous and to a degree the protests are, are non-hierarchical organizations. And so what, what do these things look like? How do they work? Um, and so I'd like to introduce the concept of a disorganization. And so when everybody's a volunteer, when everybody on anonymous IRC is there because they want to be there, how do you actually do things constructively? Like, how do you actually get people moving in the same direction? And so you have to do something totally different. Because if you tell them what to do, they're going to tell you to shove off, and then they're just going to go do something else, or they're going to leave. And so I want to go through some kind of the tactics that kind of come up, come up in this sort of position. And so the first characteristic is radical openness. And so there's been a lot of talk about Anonymous and their secret IRC chat layers, you know, striking out and selling their lulz bolts around and causing havoc on the internet. If you Google for Anonymous IRC, the first hit you will get is one of the Anonymous IRC networks. And you can go and you can join in and you can talk to the people who, you know, plan protests and they can send you off to the people where, I mean, the lulzsec public IRC channel is that. It is public. And so... Yeah, the, the, that brings with it some advantages, it brings with some disadvantages. Um, and one of the advantages is that there's participation, right? That sort of, if you also want to go tell them that you think they're being idiots, you can do that. Um, yeah, and so not hidden, not hidden at all. Um, when you're working like this, where you just have people showing up and volunteering for a while and then leaving, uh, we use a system that I like to call adhocracy. And so this is the formation of temporary working groups to just go out and sort of something they're interested in, you put a team together and you go, go do it. Um, IRC. IRC is the big one here. I think this is a fine example of the tool, way the tools of the internet can be used to facilitate particular kinds of collaboration. Um, I'd love to be giving you a demo right now. I don't have Wi-Fi set up. Um, I'm going to do a, a hack open space session on sort of just an introduction to IRC, what's out there, how to be safe, how to participate. I think the most important, important thing that groups like Anonymous do, that the protests do, that Telecomics does, is a concept I call duocracy. And so rather than a formal system of, hey, you fill out these TPS reports, I'll make copies, go buy coffee, people just show up and they just do. And that is sort of the highest organizational principle, is that you can come up with whatever structures or ways of working that you want, but at the end of the day, what matters is what you get done. And so I think there are... All right. So I think there are a lot of different examples 
of other organizations or disorganizations in real life that follow this. Um, this is video from Critical Mass. And so I know this is not going to be a big deal here because this is Portland. But Critical Mass has been going on for over 20 years in 300 cities worldwide with no centralized leadership. The Chicago ride, which this is, gets 3,000 people in the summer. I know that's not a big deal here. I mean, I know you guys had 10,000 naked people on bicycles just this weekend. But yeah, that's a fairly impressive, impressive history for something that has no centralized structure, no, no formal process, no leaders. People just go out and they do. We just go out, we ride bikes, that's what we do. Um, some other things, I think Burning Man works like that. You might say Burning Man is just a big hippie party in the desert. You wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> but you have to remember that while that party is going on, it is the third largest city in Nevada. That there's over 65,000 people surviving, prospering, partying in this harsh desert environment where the only things you can buy are ice and coffee. <laughs> And so, lots and lots of models. I think that open source fits this model too, right? Where's the code? Show up, show me a patch, right? And even this conference, right? This is, this is a shot of the volunteers yesterday figuring out what they're going to do, right? People are just literally, as we sit here as, all day, you know, the day I was here yesterday, what can I do? How can I help? How can I make this conference happen? And that's impressive, impressive. Um, it's in the same model, though certainly not at scale, as sort of the protests in Tahrir Square. And so, you know, in Tahrir Square, not only did they get these, all these people out, but they set up a medical tent. They set up a barber shop. Uh, I met actually one of the organizers from the youth movements when I was in the UK two weeks ago. Um, they set up a stage where people, for the first time in 50 years, could get up and speak their opinion. Um, Wisconsin, right? Anybody know the protests are still going on in Wisconsin? Anybody know that? Yeah. The Saturday Farmer's Market has now turned into the Saturday's Farmer's Market in protest. 3,000, 5,000 people. Um, and so I have a friend, friend from there, and we're talking about it. And so the same, same sort of things, medical tents, massage tents, a dance troupe. Uh, the people in Spain have, occupying a square in Barcelona, have started planting gardens at their protest site. Um, yeah, this is, this is all example of this phenomenon I call duocracy, right? You just go out, you just do.